Hi guys, it's Clarice and welcome to the second video for the Pink Holiday Series. In this video, we are going to be painting this cute little pink bug. So if you signed up for the emails, you would have gotten the base drawing for this. So if you're ready to go, make sure you have that sketched out or maybe you want to try this and s sketch it out yourself, which, you know, I love a challenge. I never say no to one, so go for it. But if you do want the base drawing for that, please make sure you are signed up for emails and I have listed that in the link below. Okay, so really quickly, guys, if you like videos like this and you are enjoying this whole pink holiday series or any of my other videos, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, consider sharing these videos as well as it really does help my channel grow. And so on that note, let's talk about uh, the supplies I'm using really quickly. So I have painted this using the exact same supplies we did for the first video, which was the pink holiday house. And the only additional thing that I'm using that's slightly different are, let's start off with the markers. These deco brush metallic markers. These are absolutely fabulous little things to use if you want to add tiny little details but also if you want to create a whole thing uh, or whole I guess piece of artwork using entirely this they kind of work like watercolors I've not done a video on them just yet but for this painting here I ended up using the deco markers to give us little Christmas baubles on the tree so you can use them any which way you can even end up using your own watercolors to add the baubles but I just wanted to mention that this is what I used and I absolutely love them. It gives gives these a little bit of a shine. For brushes, we're using the Princeton brushes because y'all know I love Princeton. We've got Princeton Velvet Touch round number four, Princeton Heritage zero, and then Princeton Neptune number six. For the paper, I'm using Etcher Hot Press 100% wood pulp paper. So I've just taken a sheet and I've slit that in half and this is what I have. And then for colors, I'm using the Dalaroni set of 48. This is what they look like. I've just taken them out of the pan and I'll be addressing the colors I'm using as I paint along. All right, so if you're interested in any of the supplies I've mentioned so far, I've listed all of them in the description below. I've also listed a link to my Amazon store because I know holidays are coming up. Some of y'all are new to watercolor and you're not quite sure what to use, where to get it that sort of thing. So I've listed the store link as well. Feel free to check that out. These items are listed and there's other items listed as well. All of my favorites actually. The first course of action to tackling painting this cute little holiday scene is going to be us mixing a little bit of the Alizarin Crimson Hue on our palette. And we want a very watered down version of this. We're, paint, we're going to be painting this very much so similar to the pink holiday house that we did. Same technique here. So you can feel free to go in first with your, with your damp brush with a light version of the color or with water and then use a second brush to, to add color into it. Uh, or just do what I am doing right now where I've gotten a light version of pink and I'm just going to be painting the whole area outside of our windows and as we the reason we're doing light and I mentioned this many many times in my videos is that it's easy to build up in color if we have light and then we can immediately, slowly, progressively rather, um, get darker tones happening. But it's hard to flip and do the other, the reverse. Now what I'm also going to be doing is adding a little bit of intentional white space in between some of these areas here. I want to keep this looking loose and fun and uh, having these little bits of white here and there really help with that. So I'm gonna do tackle this first half here and then I'm going in with my number four. We're gonna take some of this, like a slightly brighter version of the Alizarin and I'm going to highlight in certain areas that I want the color to be blooming and flaring out. So for instance, 
right there. A little bit up here as well, sure. And this is the perfect time to be doing this because this is where we get our nice, gorgeous flares of color. I love how the color just immediately seeps in and just gives us such a glorious result. This is my absolute favorite part about watercolor is this part right here, right there. I'm gonna drop some here too, allow that to flare in nicely, giving us some very natural looking watercolor effects. So right away you can tell the certain shapes that we've highlighted in the area here. So we're going to do the same thing over on the next side. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to lightly dab more of the pink here in these areas. Feel free to push color around, um, especially in areas where you feel it needs to be emphasized more. Now is the time to get that perfect, beautiful blend. Um, you can also go in after, and that's entirely up to you. Um, and that's more of a wet on dry effect. I like the more wet on wet where it's just beautiful in my opinion. And you just get such a gorgeously romantic feel to your painting. So here we go. I am doing the same thing here with the second half of for the car off the car and trying to leave a little bit of area that's like some white space happening in a very haphazard, unintentional manner. Keeping things loose. I love my loose style of painting. It just always um, not only leaves so much to the imagination, but also kind of takes the stress away from having to make something look a certain way like a picture or what have you. As most of you know, I like to paint mostly for fun. And so this brings the fun back into creating and expressing yourself. So I've done the same thing that I've been doing here, just slightly more on the side. And I wanna kinda highlight these areas, the lines where the cars, where the parts of the cars kind of meet that makes sense where you can tell it's like one part to the other based on the drawing that you have and some of these areas are should be a little bit darker so I'm just dropping in some paint because as watercolor dries you guys will notice that it dries a lot lighter than it actually first looks like when you lay down the color so this is why adding dabs of color in into it while it's damp uh, repeatedly also really helps to really brighten that area up and give you more of a darker tone certain areas so like for this area here because this is one side of the car one part of the car the, there's another part that starts here so I'm kind of highlighting these areas by dropping in more color you also want to be mindful about how dark this color is so we don't want this to be too dark because this alizarin pink, as gorgeous as it is, if you get too dark of a tone, it'll end up being almost like a red, which is what we we want to try and avoid because we want to keep it nice and pink because the theme is pink holiday items that we're doing. I'm going to add a little bit more of that of the color right below this area here because this is where the um, door handle is. And I think this is good for now so we can progress on to doing this part. And I'm doing the exact same thing, dampening my brush first and then we're going in and adding um, color to these areas. Again, I am also being mindful of leaving a little bit of white space happening here and there.
and I like to dip water, get some water on the tip of my brush when I'm painting because this helps kind of ease the color in um, and give us a nice smooth blend. I'm circling my way around the front light as well. And we can even actually just go over this area because we need this area to be pink as well. Much like in the, for the rear that we did. And notice I've left a lot more white space in, uh, in this area here than in the other two. And I love the light pink that's happening. So I wanna try and control how pink things get. So let's see if I can do that. Dropping in some pink. This is where the magic happens. I love to see this, as I've mentioned a few times already. And this is where I want the highlight to really show. So I am going for it at the front here. And just adding a little bit more strokes at the bottom here to kind of really emphasize that. Adding more at the bottom as well. And I've mentioned this many, many times, but if you allow things to sit different, um, when you add color, it all depends on how dry the area is, how damp it is, because sometimes you can get immediate blooms and then sometimes you can get some very controlled blooms that'll help give you um, more tighter results, I should say, as opposed to loose. I'm going to give a little bit of a darker hue right about this area. Fabulous. And I think we are good. Let me just see if I need to do any more. Yes, just a little bit. Because like I mentioned, it dries up a lot lighter. So just highlighting a couple of areas here. Notice how more controlled these blooms are now because I've allowed this bit to dry before going back in. And those are things you should, these are things you should keep in mind as you're painting because uh, they're important for certain results that you might be looking to achieve. All right, so we are done painting the car. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of, with the leftover pink, do some of the the inside of the wheels right here, the, the second circle, I would say. So I'm getting a very watered down version of the pink and I'm just, there's a piece of hair right there. I'm just going to lightly add color like this around. And then I'm gonna get more water on my brush and I'm going to allow this to swoosh around. So now I am bringing things full circle covering the whole area with this pink. Trying to be a little bit loose. Same thing on this side. And almost done here. Fabulous. So now that this is done, we don't really have any other areas that are gonna be pink. So we can rest easy and head on to getting some Paints gray mixed up. So for the paints gray, we're gonna be using this in the car, car window areas. I'd love to see a nice light gray fading off into white so it doesn't interfere with the tree at the top. And we'll get some nice paints gray happening just over the tires. And so here we go. We're trying to get that same sort of super light consistency happening. Let's start off with the windows first. And for this, I think, again, we'll do what we did with the tires where we just wet a certain area and then got water and just kind of allowed it to, to go up. Um, but I'll do one of each, actually. First one is where we're just dampening the area. And you guys can decide which technique you like better. Leaving a little bit of white space between that pink and this area that I am dampening. 
and making sure our line at the bottom here is nice and straight. Now I'm going to go in, get some of this color, and we're dropping this in here. And if you feel like you want to tilt your page so that it falls, so that it kind of slowly travels down, you can totally do that. And that helps things kind of go up higher. Or if you want to just help it slowly move along, that works too. So I'm washing off most of the color from my brush and I'm going to lightly push this along because I don't want um, the end results to be super um, watercolor effect. What is that bleeding effect? Cauliflower effect. Um, so I kind of helped it along and then I'm just adding a little bit more Payne's Gray at the bottom here so that it kind of seeps in and gives us nice little bloom in. This takes away the whole flatness of our painting. So the second technique is dampening. We're just taking the, the gray and just going for it, the light gray. So just kind of dampening that whole area, then getting some color directly from the color cake and just kind of dropping that in. Because that's so much darker, I'm just going to drop that in here. Make sure the outer bits of your area are not damp, like the pink area, because then the black would seep in. And if it is doing that, just make sure you take your paper towel, which you should always have handy, and just lightly dab it off. And you're good. I'm going to move this along so that it gives us that nice dark to light. Really trying to control how and where this color is moving and which areas are damp. This is the best way, really. And so we are done the windows, and now we can progress onto doing the insides at the bottom here. And again, keeping it fairly simple. This is just a, a plain painting into this shape. So I've done with a nice dark color first, and then I'm taking water on my brush and I am spreading it around. Now, if you feel more comfortable doing this with your number four, then absolutely do that. I'm fairly good, I'm no pro, but I'm fairly good with or confident using the number six for such things, which is why I'm doing that. Then I'm just dipping to get a little bit more color and I'm dropping that into the top area here and just at the edge. So that, again, doesn't look flat. Very nice. So. We've got that. Let's do this back end here. Same thing over here. I know I'm starting a little bit darker. And then I'm just washing off most of the color and then I'm extending this color into this tiny little sliver of an area between the car or between the pink because this is also part of the car between the pink and the tire. Fabulous. So this is almost, almost done. And now we can paint our tires. The tires, I just want it to be like a really nice, rich, dark Payne's gray, almost like a black. So I'm just taking the color directly from here and I'm going to go ahead and um, let's start on this side first. So 
If you want to start by kind of outlining the inner tire first and then slowly making your way outward, that works. And the reason it works is because, remember, we just painted this Payne's gray area. So you don't want your color to be blooming into that damp area. That is not what we want to do. We want to have a little bit of control over how the color spreads and how dark it gets. So that's one thing to keep in mind and one tip to sort of circle your way around, you know, hanging around and waiting for too long for things to dry. Additionally, you can always use a hairdryer to help things progress and dry quickly. So just leaving, trying to leave a little bit of white space in here because I really like that effect that it gives. So adding more color at the top here, trying to get that nice dark black or dark gray happening. And now we're doing the same thing over here. Don't fixate too much on the sizing of the wheels and if they are too, like if one is a little bit smaller than the other, that's okay. Remember we're keeping things light, we're keeping things fun and this is supposed to be a very relaxing process as you create lovely holiday cards or pieces of artwork for you or your loved ones during this season. And I'm a firm believer in the fact that the kind of energy that you have while you paint, it's very representative in the end results or like even in when someone gazes upon a piece of artwork. I'm sure you guys have heard people go, in museums how does this piece make you feel and it makes me feel like this or it makes me feel sad or it makes me feel happy and this is what I mean by there that when people express themselves through art that is a thing it's just like hearing a beautiful song and you're moved to tears or looking at a beautiful piece of artwork and being moved to tears or just feeling joy All right, so we are done our tires. We're almost done. Let's tackle the window at the back, the window at the front, and the two lights before we head on to doing our tree. So one more thing that I forgot is adding a little bit of our Payne's Gray to the uh, centers here. So again, I'm loosely adding this gray and my pink is dried up, so I don't have to worry about the, the gray getting into the pink. So we're all good. I'm trying to leave a little bit of white space in between, um, just so that the area doesn't look super flat. And we are good. There we go. So the next thing is we're going to add we're going to do the back window here. And I'm just keeping it simple, guys. I'm not trying to make this hard. I'm not trying to make this super realistic. I'm just painting this in. Again, leaving a little bit of natural white space. Which kind of really helps elevate the end result. So we've got that. I'm going to do the front. And again, leaving white space for the front so it looks like there's a reflection happening. So I could even just wash off my brush and then using just like a plain clean brush, just lightly swiping off some of the color to give you a nice blend. And actually, you know what? I'm going to make this, instead of adding yellow to this, I'm just going to keep this area also gray. So it's a very pink and gray situation happening here. 
just a touch at the back and we are good. Now, one thing that I would suggest if you find once things have dried up that things are not looking a certain way, for instance, um, we're going to be erasing most of our pencil markings here. So if you feel like there's no clear indication of that shape right here, you can go in with your number four and get a slightly lighter version of the pink and just highlight certain areas very loosely or even use a black marker, if you will. So uh, one more thing before we do, I know I keep saying one more thing, uh, just before we completely graduate to the tree, I want to add my door handle and I think, I think it's fairly dried up right now. So I'm just going to keep it with the pink or the alizarin that I have getting the color directly from there. This might be a very, this might be a bit too stark. So I'm just getting a little bit of water from there. So see, this is like an unadulterated version of the Alizarin. It's a little bit damp, so I'm getting a little tiny bit of a blend. So I'm washing off my brush. This is how I'm tackling my little faux pas because I thought it was dry, but it isn't. And I'm just lightly going over this area and trying to spread the color so it looks more like a rectangle as opposed to a mistake. And that's good enough. So this is great. I'm going to leave this as is. And I'm going to just try and wipe off some of this color. And now we do the tree. Now comes the tree. So before you try your hand at the tree, a, I have to make a, another disclaimer and a reminder, make sure that this area of your car is completely dry. Because if you start painting your tree, obviously some areas are going to be overlapping on the car. You don't want that green seeping in here and that'll happen if your area is wet damp or even slightly damp so just be aware okay kind of like what happened on my handle right there so for our tree i'm going to turn it this way vertical just so it's easier for me to paint so i know this area will be nice and perfect at the top and this area is going to be like a little bit more squished not as wide as this and colors i'm using are going to be a sap green or olive green they're both very very similar and i'm going to get a little bit of i think it's the burnt sepia hue and viridian hue so this can be like these three colors let's do sap green viridian and sepia you can also swap out the swap uh, swap swap out the sap green for uh, olive green because they're similar like I mentioned so I'll start off with using the number six because I like to use that as my dampening brush and then going in with the number four and adding some darker tones in there but let's get to mixing a little bit of color so I'm going to mix in some of the verit no we're going to start off with sap green first because we want to start light and then add dark over it because same concept like with the car with the exception that the car we just used one color in different varying mixes between color and water so for this I'm going to start off with a very watered down sap green get those nice lush green tones happening in there and then we'll mix viridian or even mix a little bit of the sepia with this to save time and get some nice tones in there so I'm going to start off with just doing a little bit of the tip. So I'm going to have it be slightly tipping downward if I can. And then I'm just adding loose strokes. So this is my center right here. Loose strokes, getting water on my brush and just dabbing to get bits of color in here. I'm going to dab off some of this green because I want it to be, I don't want to extend this tree too much on the out, so I'm trying to get a little bit more control over how, how far out this tree extends. 
So getting nice little strokes of water in here. And adding a little bit more of that green on the outskirts. Dabbing it in between here as well. So we've got little peeps of green happening. Now, once that is done, let's add some sepia into our green and darken this a little bit. And drop that in now. So as we drop this in, just be very selective about where you're dropping it in. So right now we're just kind of dropping this in to give it that nice feel for loose colors and shadow effects between the, um, the, the sap green. So like light sap green and some of the darker tones. So if we turn this over, this is what that looks like, which is great. Notice all the white space happening as well. You want that. White space is your friend. I always say this, and I don't think I'll ever stop saying it. Okay, so this is good enough. Um, I'm going to now get some of that Viridian Green, which is right here. And I've actually not swapped out my brush. Sometimes this happens because I'm so in the game of making sure I get those nice bleeds before that doorway closes. Um, but I'm going to swap over to the number four right now as I'm doing touches of this darker green. So Viridian, I've just mixed it into the, the mix that I had previously and we're adding, using the nice fine point tip of this brush, we're gonna start from the top do a little bit of a, almost like an over, like painting over these areas and allowing the, the watercolor to sort of seep in and give us a more natural effect with where things, where the green seeps in and which areas are dark, which areas are light. But we do want to focus a lot of the dark in the center, um, also kind of giving us that center and more at the bottom too. But we can add more of the, the brown for the bottom area because that's where it's going to be resting on the car. So there's more bunches of green there. We don't want to lose too much of our white space. So try and be mindful of that. And we want to tackle this, at least I want to tackle this, before this area gets dried completely. So at this point, you can always turn your your tree or your, your painting back to the original way it should be, just so you have a better view of what it looks like now that majority of it is done. So I'm just mixing my colors right here. Getting some nice dark, dark greens. And then dropping in the color, especially here at the bottom. So like this is where you're getting dabs of like the green strokes happening right here because they're bunching. And notice how loose I am keeping my strokes. Some of it is overlapping on the gray, which is perfect. That is what I wanted to happen. And I'm dropping in a couple of strokes in between at the top as well, but kind of always meeting in the center here so that we know the viewer has an idea of where things are. And we are almost done. So you can see how beautiful and full this tree looks. I'm going to end this by getting some of my sepia. I know there's a lot of green on it right now, but that's a great brown. And I'm going to have my center, so this is where it is, just dropping this line ever so lightly 
and then painting in my stump. Moving around some of the brown here just so that it doesn't sit without blooming in. And then for our stump area here, I'm just lightly adding some water strokes and pulling the color into the tree. And we are pretty much done. So at this point, feel free to allow this to dry. Um, and then we can come back and add a little bit of either metallics, uh, so using metallic watercolor, and these are KMS watercolors that I have, or using your Karen Deco brushes, which are fabulous little water-based markers as well. So we can use this to decorate certain elements like adding maybe some nice shiny elements on the tree, or maybe even things like for the light or for the handle, just ideas for you guys to chew on. I think it's pretty much dried up. And if you notice, I just did a little bit of a gray line extension just at the bottom of the car, kind of tied things together, added a couple of little details in certain areas, just using a, literally just using a little bit of pink with some of the, uh, with some of the paints gray. So some areas look a little bit purplish gray, some areas look a little bit more pink. So use your use your discrep your discrepancy and proceed accordingly. And last thing I want to do is just adding a little bit of so I'm using my zero brush and adding use your discretion, not discrepancy. Gosh. Okay, adding a little bit of detail just down the center here. And then also along the edges of the windows. And they don't have to be perfectly aligned lines, just as you've got, or even like full thick lines, as long as there's like a hint of a line there if there's a little bit of a break until it kind of extends onto the other side that's fine I just want to give it a little bit detailed a little bit of detail before we kind of leave it loose as is so that's that and last but not least I did mention the Karen deco brushes so I'm gonna actually use the purple the um, the bronze and I believe this is pink because it'll be helpful. So these are fabulous brushes. I love, we're using them very simply for this project. Feel, feel free to use, like I mentioned, your metallic watercolors. So I went ahead and I used my deco brushes right here and I created these cute little, um, circles within the tree itself not exactly a perfect circle some of them are a little bit half it's kind of to show or give you that impression that they're hidden between the branches so just keeping it loose again and this is the end result so these are metallic so they have a little bit of a shine feel free to use metallic watercolors if you have um, and again I'm listing all the supplies in the description below so feel free to avail of those Christmas and the holidays are coming up so you might want to gift it to yourself or to friends and family they make fabulous gifts and as I mentioned previously you may or may not want to do a splatter of white gouache we do have a white background so I've I decided not to do that you can also do a black splatter to give it that more vintage vibe and I wouldn't make it look more like snowfall so I'd probably just spray or do the splatter in off to a certain area and maybe around the tree that sort of thing and that's it guys hope you guys enjoyed this hit the like button hit the subscribe button and um, let me know in the comments what you thought if you are on Facebook and Instagram I would love for you to follow me and also tag me if you end up doing any of these projects from my pink holiday series thanks guys and we will chat soon bye